He arrived not for waging a battle of diplomacy, but for embarking on his mission of asserting the right of the Indian people to be masters of their destiny and cultivating friendship with the world. Accompanying Gandhi were two fellow delegates, Sarojini Naidu and Madan Mohan Malavia. At noon on August 29th, the Rajputana steamed out. Jawaharlal Nehru watched the ship that carried the sole representative of one-fifth of the human race to the Arabian Sea and the Far West. Gandhi was in the best of spirits during the voyage. Riding the pitching seas like a veteran mariner, he selected for himself a corner on the second-class deck where he spent most of the day and the whole of the night under the canopy of the starlit sky. The quaint traveller carried the scantiest of luggage and scrupulously observed his daily routine on board the ship. After a weary voyage of 1,660 miles, daylight broke over the rock-crested shores of Eden. Gandhi steered the Rajputana into the first port of call. I hope I do not capsize the boat, he remarked, as he turned the wheel. A big welcome awaited Gandhi at Eden. He arrived at the citizens' meeting to receive an address of welcome and a purse. In his first public speech outside the Indian subcontinent since 1914, he declared that India did not stand for isolated independence. One fifth of the human race, becoming free through non-violence and truth, can be a great force of service to the whole of mankind. He extolled the simple way of life associated with the Khalifs and told the Arabs to help solve the Hindu-Muslim problem. As the ship was gliding through the Suez, messages of welcome from the Egyptians poured in. On crossing the Egyptian waters, Madame Zaglul Pasha sent the great leader of Great India her best wishes for the success of the Indian cause. Gandhi had in his loyal secretary, Mahadev Desai, an assistant who not merely relieved him of much of his routine work, but put his keen intellect and tireless capacity for work at his disposal. Mahadev's devotion to Gandhi was complete, and Gandhi's affection for him deep and unbounded. On the misty, cold morning of September 11th, SS Rajputana anchored at Marseille. When the spiritual ambassador of India alighted on the soil of war-weary Europe, he was hailed with shouts of Vive la Gandhi! At Folkestone on September 12th, Britons gathered to greet the guest of the nation. Gandhi landed on British soil with thoughts of the hard task ahead. I am here to vindicate the honor of India and to uphold truth as I see it, for I believe it is the keystone of life. Gandhi had accepted Muriel Lester's invitation to stay at Kingsley Hall, a centre dedicated to the slums of London. 
the members of every section of Bow assembled outside Kingsley Hall to welcome Gandhi. The pearly king, accompanied by his son and daughter, came to pay respects to the distinguished visitor in his domain. Gandhi greeted the costermonger royalties who offered him their best oranges. Take the orange, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Why take only one? I take two. Kill. <laughs> 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 